<laughs> Why are we talking about religion? And uh, you touched on it a little bit earlier. Like, I wanted to get your perspective on this. You you seem like a strong man. You know who you are. Like, you, 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 you seem set in your identity, your principles. How do you... What's your relationship with God and spirituality? I didn't... I don't think I knew Jesus Christ at all um, until recently I've started to pray digest more of the Bible learn more about the Bible learn more about uh, you know, the teachings of, of Christianity and expose myself to I guess teachers or as many teachings as I could possibly get. put myself in, in in places where you know I feel like there is a strong Christian presence yeah. I'm a big fan of going into church. I'm a big fan of, you know, every time I go into a cathedral here in Spain, for example, I always, I'll light a candle and I'll pray. I'm not Catholic, but I will, I'm not a part of any particular church or anything like that. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a complete newbie to this subject. So right. I'm just trying to learn as much as I possibly can about it. Because I, I like to be, I like to have an informed opinion on things, not just an opinion. Right. right? You, you don't believe in faith? Uh I do absolutely believe in faith. I don't think I have faith yet. Okay. Purely because I want. I'm in a situation where I want to have faith. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the interesting thing about like like God and spirituality is like when you are ready for it, you want it, you find it. Yes. One hundred percent. I think so. Yeah. I had a very. I'll tell you about this very interesting experience I had. And in fact, I sh I, I'm not wearing them right now, but I have a I have some um, prayer beads that I got off uh, an Irish man when I went to England. Sorry, when I went to Ireland with my father re very recently. We stopped off. We were just driving around the neighborhood, around the countryside, whatever, and looking for things to see at a particular plan. And we came across St. Patrick's Well, one of the many wells that he, that he you know, used to do baptisms in. The oh. St. Patrick, okay. the patron saint of Ireland. Right. Uh, he, used to, he would come to these, these natural springs where they used to do pagan rituals, and when he converted the pagans to, to Catholicism, he would baptize them in the spring. Oh. And this, this one in particular was still there. And has the old the old church walls are still there? It's all bricked up. It's it's you know kind of in a ruined state now, but it's, you can still see where the church was, where the altar was, uh, and the spring is all still there. And this is where Saint Patrick literally you know came and blessed people and baptized people and everything. And I I pulled in there with my father, and this old Irish man was there, and he was carrying. He had to descend down this sort of spiral staircase to get to the well, and this man was walking up the hill with these two jugs of water. I'm like, what are you doing there, mate? And he's like, oh, I, this, is, this is my drinking water. I, this is a natural spring. It's the healthiest, cleanest water we have in the neighborhood. So I fill up like several jugs of water and that's my drinking water for the week. And he comes there every week and does it. Wow. And I think the man, must, he must have been a priest. He must have been a priest. He had these prayer beads on his wrist. And as we, we walked down there to the well with him, he just told us all about the history of the well, about the history of Catholicism in that region and everything yeah. like that. And then he took the beads off of his wrist and gave them to him. These, these Catholic prayer beads, and I was like, "What?" I'm like, "I can't take this." He's like, "No, no, no! I insist you take these right now. I feel like these are meant to be with you right now." Wow. Yeah, and I wore them. I've been I've worn them every day. I'm not wearing them right now, but I've worn them every day since. Really? Yeah. That was a very. I I I would I was opening my mind to Christianity, and I wanted to be Christian. I wanted to learn more about Christianity and learn about my background and my faith and my heritage as, as a you know, Euro, ethnically European man. And uh, you know, that experience was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's you know it's it's amazing how God introduces certain things into your life like when you're ready for it. You know? Yeah. So like like for me, I was I was raised in a Christian household, um, but our our church experience was a little bit different from I think Eastern European churches. Uh, we, we I went to a Baptist church where it was more like for me it was more theatrical, so it didn't really feel real. Like a Southern Baptist one. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that that sort of theme, that sort of vibe, um, but I believe that God and I appreciate that experience because it allowed me to to believe and have faith in a higher power and then as I got older I didn't so much uh, go into the church anymore I had to find God my, my, on my own hmm. so I, I started like reading different uh, books on wisdom uh, people like Manly P. Hall um, Walter Russell like th these guys are like esoteric geniuses because they look at the universe in such a th through the lens of of someone who kind of sees God in everything like hmm. if, if you look at like the Fibonacci sequence for example it's repeated all throughout the universe. That is is God to me. That's God leaving leaving clues. Like I, I've arranged this universe in a way where if you look, you can see it. You know, and and you look at the laws of the universe. You have the law of gender. Everything is male and female. You know, 
uh, the law of uh, as above, so below. And all these different laws that if you if you study them, you can kind of you can kind of see that everything is connected. This 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 you're not different from me. Like we're connected in a in a way. And every and, and when you like, I meditate on that a lot. So that allows me to go deep, like kind of within myself, where I don't really have a fear of death. I think it's more of a transformation at that point. Like you just transform into something else. Your energy is still alive, but you, you just leave your body. And uh, it allows me to live like a very, uh, not a fulfilling life, but a, a life where I'm, I'm content. Hmm. And I can look at things in, in a different way. Yeah. So I, I definitely encourage you like to keep going, man. Keep going. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, it, for me, my, the place I'm at right now is sort of, I guess, digesting the Gospels, learning more about the drop, learning more about the Gospels, learning more, and, and kind of learning more about the different denominations and what's, like, there seems to be so much, to me, as, an, as a guy who was raised completely agnostic, right, yeah. I had no faith growing up at all. I've only come into it, you know, in the last, like, few years. Same with your family as well? Yep. Completely agnostic, yeah. Um, technically, I'm Methodist, I think, technically, because my parents are Methodist. Yeah. Uh, never baptized or anything like that, but the idea of all these different denominations, like, you know, all of them agree that, you know, Christ is king and, and you know, he's, he is the son of God, but they all bicker and fight and disagree about all kinds of min little minutia. Yeah. I'm like, it's, to me, it just seems like you're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. Why are you focusing, why are you all focusing on the things that separate you rather than, and this is a, as a complete newbie and a novice to this, so everyone feel free to rip me to shreds <laughs> about my opinion, but yeah. <laughs> what do I know what I'm talking about? But it seems like, why would you focus on the minutia that separates you rather than not just focus on the thing you all believe in yeah. together. You know, uh, it, and, it, and in, in America in particular, there's like so many different Protestant denominations. It's, cr it's, it's hard to keep track of. I don't understand it. And understanding like what is the difference between all these things. Yeah. Uh, a very, very good resource for this is um, uh, Redeemed Zuma. It's a YouTube channel. He has a very, very good video breaking down all the different denominations and where they broke off and, and what they mean and what they st stood for initially. Yeah. Uh, I, but these days, I don't really think there's that much difference between them all, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I don't think there really is. Yeah, that's, that's well, so I've been looking into Islam, as you know, I'm a Muslim now, and, and uh, one thing that I appreciate about Islam is that it's, it's only two sects, and, and it's and even in the difference, there's no there's no real difference. They still pray the same way, they still read the same book, right. and, and there's, there's really nothing different. And interestingly enough, I talked to somebody who said that the government, obviously it's always the government, they, they radicalize certain imams, like the Muslim uh, preachers, to start like having female leaders <laughs> and like gay leaders and gay moss now. Good, so good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think so you're gonna have we'll much, see how uh, much that success. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's my that is my um, problem with certain denominations in Christianity. Is one you shouldn't let women preach. It's clear, that's very clear in the Bible. Yeah. And two, you shouldn't let gays and homosexuals preach. Yep. You're getting canceled. You're getting canceled, bro. I mean, I'm just reading, just, just literally what's written in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cancel the Bible. Well, you try, can try canceling the Bible. Right. Yeah, good luck with that. 